All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Jennifer Peavy, who is a thought leader, designer, and author. Jennifer, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Tim? Timothy? Tim, Tim or Timothy? Timmy. Timmy. Okay. I am doing good, Timmy. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, <laughs> we're glad to have you here, and we're excited to hear about your dreams and goals and how we can help. I've said that sounds great. Awesome. Well, we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so I guess this might not be the fun part, but I come from a varied background. Like you had mentioned my titles, I have engineering, innovation, and design. And really a lot of that was, I like to learn. So that is a fun thing. I love to experience new things and find new things and figure out how they work. And I enjoy that a lot, breaking it down. But ultimately, I love to make and create. And so I have my own studio. So being able to um, play with new toys or maybe maybe tools, and we can call them toys or tools, but being able to learn how to create uh, something new with a new tool or new project. It's a lot of what I like to do. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love that. And what do you do for fun? Is that like what you do for fun? The tinkering? That would, that is a lot of my fun is, is, is figuring out that that is where I'm most energized. Um, it's a little geeky and I geek out on the technical details, but, um, I, I do enjoy the making. So when you're tinkering with all these tools, are you like making patented stuff? Are you designing for big companies? Or are you just doing stuff for fun? Like what is the <laughs> result? Some of that happens. It definitely does happen where I'm doing that for my job. But the fun is, is when I just have the open space to be able just to make on my own. So for example, the string art that's behind me, that was something that I did when I it was in the pandemic. And a lot of this was about putting together a process on how I was going to do this. Um, and so I was trying to figure out little things like, um, I mean, it's black fabric, but I didn't know if I wanted to paint it. And then it's bits, of, it's nails that are within there. And so I wanted those to be black. All I wanted people to see was the white thread within there. So there was a lot of tinkering with the nails on saying, am I going to paint them? And then how long does it take to dry? Do I just buy them that they're already painted? But then, then what I ended up doing is saying, hey, you know, you can heat treat metals. So I started finding out I can actually do it in my oven. And so I started tinkering with, okay. If I heat them up to this temperature, what color do they get to? And some of that's on the internet to tell you, but I wasn't really sure, you know, how they stayed. And then, then you douse them in olive oil of all things. You know, I could douse them in something else, but I had olive oil in the kitchen. So that was part of the tinkering was the, the fact that I wanted this dark nail so you wouldn't see it shine, just see the thread and try to make that happen. So yes, if I have the opportunity to do that for companies or, or do that within my job, it is really fabulous but that doesn't always happen. So most of the time it's more when I'm getting to do it on my own. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it. Well, tell us a bit more about your motivation. Is it just that love of learning and making and creating, or is there something more that gets you up and keeps you going every day? So I, I think one of the things, and there's this magical moment for me where I take something that is rather chaotic and then there is something that has structure in the end result. So it, the, my, my best example of that is I also weave. I do tapestry weaving. And, you know, if you have yarn and not even a ball of yarn, just yarn sitting there, it is soft. It could be knotted. It just, it could be a mess. But when I actually put it in to the vertical structure or the, the warp and put that in there, after a while, I have something that's a piece of fabric. And it's, and it's strong and it has the structure to it. And I, I'm, it, it's like watching grass grow. It's not something that anybody wants to watch me do, but I enjoy it. And I, but there's that moment when I've, I'm done for the day and I reach out and I grab the edges of it and I can feel that structure. And to me, there's a magical moment there that says, you know, that I created this order out of this chaos and there's something I can hold on to with that. And that, that really excites me about it. How I end up doing that for my companies is very similar is this idea of, I take all of these ideas and I do um, post-it notes and I'll have all these post-it notes on the wall, but there's a moment where you start seeing patterns in the information. And, and that is very magical to me as well. Again, going back to what is my motivation is it's being able to create or not create, but able to see some sort of order in all that chaos. 
Gotcha. So where did that start? Because it sounds like it has an origin story. Or were you just born that way? I, I well, maybe I was born that way. But part of it is that um, I can be a bit chaotic. And maybe it was a survival survival skill that I needed to have is because, oh, I love to learn. Oh, and there are all these shiny objects. So my life can be rather chaotic. But I do want to produce whether it's a piece of artwork for me or something for a client, I do actually want there to be an end result out of it. And so when that happens, that's always magical. And I, but going back to what's the origin story, I, I don't know that there is one. I know that it was with the weaving was the first time when I realized that uh, magic. Gotcha. I love it. Well, let's jump into your dreams and goals now. Tell us a bit about Dreams, goals, bucket list items, your vision for your life and your companies. Okay. So um, it's funny that my dreams have somewhat morphed over the last couple of years. And there are two different reasons. One of them is, or first reason was I left corporate and took a package. I had, uh, they had sponsored me to get a degree in industrial design. And I really felt like I had found home in that place because it allowed me to take my technical side and it allowed me to take my innovation side. But then there was this empathy side where I would observe what people did. And I found that very fascinating. I just, that part of people I find fascinating. So being able to bring all that to the table. They sponsored me to go to school. When I got out of school, management had changed and they decided this wasn't exactly what they wanted. And I had spent three years doing this and I really was taken with it. And I said, no, I've worked very hard and I want to keep this going. I could have stayed with the company, but I ended up deciding to leave with that. So that was the first thing. I offered that skill set of all that together in two or three other places. And, and when I talk to people, they're very excited because this combination of science and business and empathy for people, that design thing. It's a, it's a unique combination, but the actual application of it, it sometimes it takes too long or it just, it doesn't resonate necessarily. So I found myself a couple months before the pandemic without employment. And then we go into the pandemic, which you can imagine trying to find a job during the pandemic was something. Yeah. So my dream was up to that point was to bring all of me to the table. I wanted, I didn't want just these siloed parts of me because I felt like if I could bring all of me to the table, that would be the most exciting. What has kind of happened since then, I've redefined it as, I just wanna be happy. So I'm looking for a place of flow. I'm looking for a place where I show up, I am my best and people actually want that. So it's, it's not very, um, tangible and I am feeling my way through it, but that's what it comes down to is I want autonomy and I'd like to be happy. Um, as far as a bucket list, that is difficult to say. Um, I, I do, I, I, what I really enjoy is having days. It's what my mother used to call white days. It's just days on the calendar where there's nothing because her calendar would be printed on white paper and she'd say, there, you know, there's nothing on there. And I love having days where I am free to go to the studio and do whatever I want. And what I make is something that somebody wants, but I'm not having to worry about the pressure of, I have to pay attention to the clock and be somewhere. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Do you have those <laughs> that like a uh, once a month, once a year type of thing? Right, right. And I realize you know, it's unrealistic to say that every day that is that way, but I'd like to have more days that way than not, you know? I think you could get once or twice a week. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> where you get up and you just, and, and those are actually my most productive days where I wouldn't say I get lost, but I'm just, I'm not paying attention to the clock. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I love that. That's awesome. It's the dream. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know yeah. if you've seen uh, Phineas and Ferb. No, uh, I haven't. It's a cartoon from when I was young. I'll have to see that. Yeah, I'll look for it. <laughs> yeah, but when when I was thinking about what I want my life to be like, they would they were kids, but they, it's an absurd show. Anyway, they yeah. would wake up and they would be like, well, what are we going to do today? And they would go uh -huh. like, build a rocket or they would like go to space or something. <laughs> it was just yeah. like, that whole like, what adventure are we going on today? And having the freedom to do that is like my ideal life. 
That that actually, yes. And so I see that as an adventure. So what's the, now my particular adventure would be, okay, let's figure out how to do this. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm right there with you. So that's cool. I love it. Awesome. Well, if there were one or two people that you can meet right now, and this could be a specific person or a type of person, and they could help you get to the point of being happy in that state of flow and having those frequent free days, who would they be? And how would they do it? Oh, I'm having a hard time with a specific name, but I do think that there are, there are people out there that do something like this. And it might be that there is an artist or there is someone in the past. There, there are times I feel like I'm not sure I live in the correct time. Like either I need to be in the future or in the past. Um, and I have a feeling like somebody like Leonardo da Vinci, I would love to see what his days were like and how he began and where did the sketches come from? I got to imagine just based upon, even though he has his notebooks, I got to imagine there's a little bit of chaos in there. And, and so I would love, even if I didn't get to talk to him, just observe what his day was like, yeah. because I, I'm sure there are things I could learn based upon on what he's doing. And of course, he didn't have corporate America to deal with. He didn't have, you know, whatever else. I have no idea. The man could have been, you know, a pauper. But <laughs> it, it would be interesting to see, particularly someone who was coming up with things that um, were so different than his time period. Because there are times that I feel like I, I tend to make non-obvious connections and try to talk to people about them and not everyone follows and some of it is I need to slow down and I need to communicate better and find a different way of doing it but sometimes the way my brain works is not necessarily uh, resonating with most people and I, I have a feeling he probably was like that as well when he's talking about flying machines you know and and you still have horses and buggies and or not buggies but even just cars type of thing um so yeah that and then I'm I am finding also um, because of the pandemic and what I and that personal growth, it was a great deal for me to uh, say I wasn't going to go back to corporate, that I was going to start supporting myself in other ways and explore all of those different ways of doing that. Um, it doesn't resonate with everyone that as well, but I do find periodically that I find somebody that they light up when I talk about what I'm doing. And so I would like to find a bunch of them in the same room. You know, right now it's a one by one thing. I would, and I don't know if that's a support group or if that's a club or whatever it is, but it would be really nice to have a tribe, um, that type of thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. I have two questions. Okay. And I'm going to ask them both now because I might forget them and I want <laughs> you to help me remember them. <laughs> And vice versa. If you're going to ask me both, I'm going to go, oh, what was the second one? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The, the first question is, I'm forgetting it. <laughs> no, no, no. It is, yes, your kind of ideas that you feel like nobody really resonates with or some people don't get. Do you have a couple of those that you want to share? That's the first question. The second question, and you can say no. The second question is, are you start? starting or building a community that attracts those people right now? Let me answer the second one first. That actually, I think is going to be part of my goals in 2022. If we want to say goals or whatever it is, or my emphasis in 2022, are searching for that tribe or a family or whatever it is that we want to talk about. I've, I've spent so much time focusing on, okay, this transition from corporate, okay, how am I going to support myself that my relationships have been suffering? And I, it's not that I don't have friends and family and all of that, but there's, there's a certain amount of, I would love to have this coffee shop time, you know, where you see people regularly and it might be weekly or whatever it ends up being. Um, but I, that would be a 2022 how I really don't have an idea at this point. <laughs> so, if it, but yes, I, that is something that, um, um, and in fact, we could, we could talk about how I, how I put things together, but it would probably be a thing in January for me to think about 
or dream about is the way I look at it. I don't really do New Year's resolutions as much as say, okay, how do I want to feel in 2022? And I think that'll be a sense of belonging, a sense of community, a sense of support. And so a sense of, um, and and you could say authenticity, but a sense of being free to be able to express those ideas and other people get it, you know, having people that get me. So that's, that'll be part of it. And then in February, I'll get to the point of saying, okay, is this on meetup? You know, how do we start this thing? Um, So the first question, um, a, a prime example is going back to this idea of how am I taking that technology and the business or innovation side and this um, designer side. Part of what I was doing was trying to sit in the gap between creatives and technical people because they typically don't speak the same language. And so because I had a little bit of both or at least a, a, a breadth, maybe not a depth, but a breadth of, of experiences in those two areas, I would try to sit between those two groups of people, which in, you know, on the surface, everybody goes, oh, isn't that really cool? What I was trying to do was get to the point that the creatives would see something, if I could get the technical language in such a way that they could understand it, which typically was by making a prototype which is why I love making. So I would make something that therefore we didn't have to speak the same language. So I was dealing with chemists and I was dealing with, you know, designers. And then of course, business people, MBAs over here, they don't speak the same language at all. You know, the chemists are talking molecules and the designers are talking form and function and color and all of this. And the business people are only talking about who are we going to market this to. But if I had a prototype, if I had something physical, that was some, and in the case of industrial design, they were products. Then, you know, the chemist could look for, oh, I see this needs to be dishwasher safe, or this needs to handle sweat and sunscreen. And the business people could say, oh, we could sell this to moms. And then therefore say, if we're selling it to moms of infants, okay, now we need to do a spit up, you know, that that's a different chemical thing. And then the designer could say, okay, well, I see that shape and you know, she's holding this baby and now we've got to be able to deal with, she's only got one hand. So we need to make sure there's a, there's a way that she holds it, that she's able to, to keep all that together. And being able to get the, all of those people in the room at the same time, if something already existed, that was one thing. But what I wanted to do was get to the point that we were gonna develop strategy based on the designers who had this futuristic view of this is what we're going to need 20 years from now. Being able to take their insight and come back and inform our business and our technology development, which was going to take 10 years anyway, but to be informed by that forecasting. And that was a, that was a little too much. <laughs> that was one of those no, we're dealing with this quarter or we're dealing with this, you know, the next six months, but something that might take three to five years to be able, and, and that all these people had to come in and there would be iterations of conversations and iterations of prototypes. And then we've got to get all of these consumers in. It was a lot. It would require a lot of patience. And I very likely um, was talking at the wrong level in the company, or maybe I needed to have my own business by myself, but it's, it's a wicked problem. You know, it wasn't something I could do by myself. All these other people had to be in the room and I was just facilitating this. Um, but they all had their day jobs. <laughs> gotcha. Does that make sense? Or was I all over? <laughs> it, it does make sense. And so the people who were rejecting it were like the, the jobs that you were taking it to or the companies that you were taking it to. So one of them, so in this case, I was actually in the company and we were the technical side. And then there were business was also part of the company and the, and the designers were outside of the company. But if we had this, three of us were able to agree to something, we would then take that to a brand because we didn't make the product, but we were going to have this product that we could then go and show. And in the case of a bottle, I mean, obviously it could be somebody like a, a, a baby brand and I've, I'm completely blanking on one of those, but. Graco, you know, something like that, or Toys R Us or Babies R Us or something that we would take it to them and, and show them, this is why this is really cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. It does sound like you just need to be the CEO. Uh, maybe, and, 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 and have an enormous network because, you know, that's right there. That was three groups of people, but that's probably actually 10 or 20 people that you have to get involved to be able to solve that problem. So. Or you just need to know one or two people 
with an endorsement. Yeah, yeah, from each of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can see how startups, you know, this is this is why startups happen is they're trying to Literally. solve problems like that. Yeah, put all sorts of unusual things together. Yeah, and I, I specifically say you should be a CEO, one, because, I mean, you're talking like one, but two, Jeff Bezos talks about how his job in Amazon or his job was, did he retire as CEO? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. But yeah. anyway, it was like, he was never thinking about the current quarter. He was always thinking about yeah. it five years out because yep. he had people to think about the current quarter. Yeah. They thought about the current quarter three to five years ago. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, I ran into um, the speech writer for our CEO in the last company I was in and she always talked about when he had a town hall and he was having to deal with all of us who were thinking about the quarter and we would ask him questions, he would freeze <laughs> for that exact. And she said that exact reason he is living five years in the future. And what we're asking about was something he hasn't touched in years. Okay. So it was kind of what? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. What is the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to really help you accomplish your highest priority dream? And I guess that's like building that community. I feel like is the most applicable thing that they can do. I think that's a, that's a first one um, is, yeah, is building that community is being able to, to find, um, doesn't have to be exactly like-minded, but at least we're all in a space where we want to grow. You know, it doesn't mean that we have to agree on everything, but we all want to, um, try new things and, and grow professionally and personally. Um, I think the other thing is that would be helpful is not stopping, but slow, creating enough space, like the fact if we had, could have one or two days a week where we weren't pushing and maybe it's not play, maybe it's still structured and it's intentional, but being able to not run on a roller coaster all the time. You know, I think there's a line between being uh, busy to be productive and then busy for busyness sake. Oh my um, gosh. Don't you get know. started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think if we could, um, even if it's in that group, is to agree with the fact that we would uh, create space. We, you know, the, we still have to react, we still have to deal with the system. But if we could create space where we would have a moment to actually think about what we're doing and reflect on what we're doing, I think that would be helpful. And, and sometimes we just, we, we got to create space to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I heard this quote one time that said, the reasonable man adapts to the world mm -hmm. and the unreasonable man adapts the world to himself. Yeah. So all progress depends on the unreasonable man. Yep. Yep. And, it, and it's interesting to be labeled unreasonable. You're being unreasonable. And that's exactly, yeah. And it, it takes some gumption to do that because, you know, you're not being reasonable. <laughs> yeah. And you get a lot of judgment. It, you do. And I think that's one reason that community is needed is if nothing else, to be able to know we're all unreasonable and it's okay. And we're able to support each other in being unreasonable or whatever your particular dream is. Yeah, yeah. Do you have like a podcast or a blog that you do consistently? Um, I would not say consistently. I do. I am posting right now on social media pretty consistently. There was an article series that I did for about um, 12 weeks and I needed a break from that. <laughs> so, um, so yes. And, and right now I'm in a, a marketing campaign for a, a journal that matches my book. So I'm kind of in between not being able to write what I want to do, but to your point. Um, but yes, I want to get to that point that I am making metaphors, I think is a lot what I'm doing since I have this nature slant on things is saying, okay, this is how nature does things. Why, why wouldn't we want to be able to do it that way? Because nature does these things that, that includes reflection and action and resting and production. So why would we assume that we are a robot or a machine? You know, it's probably a more holistic view to say that we ought to mimic what nature does. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was just asking because I really think people would rally around your message. Okay. It's just like, we're all obscure fighting for like attention, you know? Yeah. Because we all have something good to say, but we got to get it out there. Yeah. So I, I'm encouraging you to do that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I am in a point where I'm kind of um, wandering at what my, or not 
wandering or wondering what my next steps are. And part of it is I'm trying to see what, how people react or what the response is to what I put out there to try to understand what is helpful right now. Going back to, um, I may be thinking about something that's only helpful 20 years from now, but what is helpful today? And that's what I'm trying to see. I kind of, you know, let's just see what sticks and what yeah. people respond to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. Let's jump into our thriving three. And the first okay. question is, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. So um, the one I always go back to is Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. And part of that is just the idea of you really don't know someone until you get through certain levels, you know, and I love that about that. And, and both of them were true to themselves throughout, but it, it took, took a while to get through there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And whether that's, um, whether that's a book movie or probably there's a podcast on it. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Probably. <laughs> Actually, most definitely there is. I, I got to imagine there is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Have you ever read, I have two books for you, Who Not How. Okay. I have not. Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy, Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Okay. That's one book. Um, and then any of Napoleon Hill's books, honestly, but specifically The Law of Success, specifically okay. the mastermind chapter in The Law of Success. Okay. Okay. So I think if you buy that book, read the mastermind chapter and just read all of his material on masterminds, you'll find that one, he talks about the importance of a good solid community like you're seeking. And two, yes. he might have some tips or something might spark yeah. your head after reading it about how to build that. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, of course. Anytime, yeah. anytime. And it's free on Audible if you get your one month subscription and you don't already have it. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Well, what is one way you like to take care of yourself? So um, what my favorite way or the most effective way is I have a, a practice every morning. So I go through this is this is what I'm going to do. And I think about um, or thought about what is the first thing I put in my body, which for me happens to be a large glass of water. Um, I then spend time going through and checking in. So I, um, I check in with the divine. I check in with myself emotionally and mentally. Um, I check in with my dog because that's love from others. And then I will actually go through and um, check in with myself physically um, in some way. So it might be yoga or in the summer when it's really, really hot here, it'll be a walk with the dog because we got to get that done very early in the morning. And a lot of that is just getting myself centered for the day. Um, uh, it, a lot of it started, uh, particularly after I left corporate and I was trying to figure out what in the world I was going to do. And there are all these nagging things about, oh my God, you got to go find a job. Uh, you're going to, you're going to, you know, they're going to come and foreclose a mortgage and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, it's four years later and we're still here. It's doing, it's okay. But you know, in the beginning when there's all this nagging and there's this voice that, that I spent my entire life with, that's really how it began was to be able just to journal and get that out. Um, and it's evolved over time with, um, I, I start recording, what is my energy level just to say, you know, and I assign a, a number to it. Zero is I, I I'm dead and a hundred is I'm flying out the window and really, really happy. So wh what is my energy level in there? And I pay attention to what that number is and how it's changed. And typically in the day, I'm like, is it better than yesterday or worse than yesterday? And is it significant? Because there may be some reason and I'd like to note what that is because I'd like more of the good things. Um, recently, what I've been doing is actually plotting them out and I can show where I was a year ago and I can see how much happier and how much more energy I have. And I'm like, okay, whatever I'm doing, something is working. Um, second thing I do is then think about what I'm grateful for because that typically is a good motivator. Um, the third thing is whatever I'm uncomfortable or scared about. And what I end up writing down is a flip of that. So if something is nagging me, like, what are you going to do? How are you going to pay for this? Then I will write down something like, I will figure it out. I will start this, or I will do that. You know, I'll give myself a, almost a cheerleading statement or a, a statement of purpose, or, you know, I will take care of this to be able to support myself. And then the last thing, um, 
the label is desire, but what it comes down to is what is it I need today to nourish me? And that could be uh, physical food. It could be, I need more water. could be, I need a walk and get out in the sunshine because I've been inside too much. Lately, um, I've been watching Designated Survivor on Netflix. And what I've been writing down is I need laughter. I need a lot more laughter in my life right now. So, so I try to look for something, particularly before I go to bed, you know, something that makes me laugh to help me um, be lighter. Yeah. And, and, and so that I actually do um, separate. And I end the day kind of a, a mirror of it, but much, much shorter. But that's all before I go to bed. And I do all of this while I'm in the bedroom. So it's this place where I don't allow devices. So it's almost like a little incubator. And so then when I finish that practice, I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to interact with the world. You know, I feel, and I wouldn't say it's an armor, but it, I at least feel like I know what's going on. So if I am irritated, you know, I'll say, you know, I didn't sleep well last night. And so it, it helps me not be so angry or so crabby, you know, and then that, that's an upward spiral. Cause then I don't do anything I regret. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I love that. I love that. And what is one action step that you can take right now to get to your highest priority dream. So I guess that's just the feeling good, which your morning routine kind of covers. It does, it does help with that. Um, but well, but one of the things that I'm doing is I'm uh, mimicking the amount of light and I'm doing it in two different ways. One is with the moon. So when there's less light with the moon, I'm spending more time resting and reflecting. And when there's more light with the moon, I have more action and I'm doing the same thing with the seasons. So I am struggling with the fact that it is December and we're about to go into the solstice and I am not slowing down. And I have written this the last three days in my journal about the fact I still have too much. I still have too much that December, this is a time period where I really need to let go so that I can rest and be ready for next year. And, um, and with the holidays and that type of thing, it's really hard to do, but I, and I keep reminding myself. So to your point, what is the one thing I need to slow down just for this month? I really, really, really slow down. Gotcha. I love it. Slow down. Okay. I have two more questions for you. I know you mentioned some limiting beliefs that kind of were popping into your head after you quit corporate. And those thoughts that were nagging on you, tell us about how you dealt with that and how you suggest people deal with that when they're experiencing them. So um, there were two different ways. There was the short term was the fact that there's this negative voice that was finding a lot wrong. And no matter what I did, it was, there was a lot of criticism with it. There's one day I yelled at it. I just finally just told it to shut up. <laughs> this wasn't something I needed, which actually was a pretty big deal. You know, the fact that I actually stood up for myself and the voice did quiet down. It, it, it did shut up for a few days. And then even when it came back, it was quieter. It was the fact that I gave myself permission to say no to that voice helped me a great deal to let that go. Um, the second thing was in my process or in my, in my particular structure, I spend time with that reflection with the moon and the, and the new moon and the darkness as I, I review my past month or however long it is. And to see, this is what I intended to get done in the last month. Did I get it done? And what I have found with that is that I will have progress that I didn't expect. I might have had an intention and then I had expectations and I get lost in the details when the full moon is out and I've got all this stuff going on and I'm all chaotic. I forget what I intended. What did I dream of? And the review shows me, hey, you met that two weeks ago. I don't know why you've been kicking yourself for the past two weeks that you aren't getting anything done. And what that has, that review has given me proof that I can trust myself. And I can trust my process. And that amount of self-trust has really allowed me to um, increase positivity and increase productivity in that way. Because I'm like, you know, even if, even if there is chaos and there is a mess, I know I'll get to it. I love that. 
I love that. So long term, it was that reflection process, and short term, it was screaming at it. Yeah, yeah, standing up for yourself, to yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Standing up for yourself. I love it. I love it. And the last question requires a bit of pretext. Okay. You know, you know how there are people on the planet, as as there are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you and me. <laughs> that uh, you know, they have a fixed mindset, not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change, and sometimes they live their whole lives like that, end up dying like that. Then other times they change to more of a growth mindset, willing to accept help, willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes that change? The sad part is, I, I think what happens more often is something, oh, I, you could say bad, catastrophic. There is something in their world that changes, that causes them to have to rethink what is going on. I, I can tell you probably most of my life, I had been nudged to do what I'm doing now. The fact that, that I probably should have been on my own, I should have been doing my own thing and all of this. But it took me to be unemployed in the pandemic and have that entire year or half to that I had to figure it out. And, and maybe after a two or three months, I might have mentally started thinking, hey, this is going to happen. But if the lockdown had stopped, I probably would have fallen back because I, I hadn't gone far enough down that road. And so for me, it required time, but also this, this, this thing that opened up space in my life for me to actually do it. And so for some people, it might be they get sick and then therefore they can't do X, Y, Z. And so therefore they have this. For me, it was that pandemic that allowed me to um, explore something that I, I can tell you probably five or six times through my life, I had been nudged, but then something would come along and, and um, I'd get distracted with it. So I first say something bad or catastrophic that makes you rethink. Maybe, maybe I did think about it my whole life, but I think ultimately there has to be space in your life to do it. You have to create the space in your life to do it. And there might be a catalyst that makes you think that way or a catalyst that causes you to create that space. Um, you know, death of a loved one or you get sick, you lose your job. Quit your job. Quit your job. Yeah, yeah. Make, some, make some different choices. Absolutely. Well, I love that. Thanks for sharing. No problem. <laughs> well, Jennifer, is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? I know this has been a, a great deal of fun. I appreciate it. I look forward to hearing about your community that you are creating in 2022. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's and yeah, I think there's going to be more than one, actually. So it'll be interesting to see. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the show. If you guys are listening to this and you loved what Jennifer had to say, maybe you are vibing with her and you want to be a part of that community, make sure to reach yeah. out to her, contact her and make sure to start building that together because we're here to make connections, make things happen. Also, let's make her the CEO that decides the world's future sooner rather than later. <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. Good. Yes, awesome. As we always ask guys, can you send this podcast to one to three people you know need to hear this message and maybe want to be a part of that community with Jennifer? Shoot us a five-star review on iTunes and we're out. <laughs>